Hi, how's it going? Um, recently I did a video on normal maps and I wanted to just make a more detailed uh, kind of redoing um, the mathematical explanation behind it. So the basic idea is we have a model of some kind. Whatever our model looks like. And um, those coordinates are defined in model space, or we could hit them with some transformations and send them into world space. It's perfectly okay um, with its standard coordinate system. There. Um, um, the surface of the model is basically made up of tr um, triangles, or at least triangles, okay? It could have some other pieces but at the very least, it's got triangles. And those triangles correspond to a texture. And that texture has its own um, coordinate system, which is um, just measured with two parameters commonly called U and V. Um, Okay, so let's say we have this triangle here in model space corresponds to some random splat of the texture. Okay, so we've got um, a bunch of fundamental... Okay, so we say, what, what kind of mapping is it between this texture space and the surface here? Um, well, essentially... It's a linear map. So um, U and V are like parameters, and then we have that parameter times two really important direction vectors, which, I mean, this looks a bit curved. It probably shouldn't be curved, but basically what we have is we have a um, tangent direction vector, and then another tangent, which is um, linearly independent, called a bitangent. And then, um, well, of course, we also have a, a normal vector, not super important in this case. This is hard to read, but it's N for normal. Okay, and um, then we have some transformation matrices. So we, we have what's called a um, tangent by tangent normal vector, which maps... Um, the parameters U and V from um, texture space into um, world space. And then we go back the other way. So if we take the inverse, that'll get us back to texture space. Um, so then the question is, okay, how do these things really work? Or actually, before we get to that, a more important question is why would we want to model things back to local space, to texture space? Well, um, it's really common when we have lights. So let's say we have this light object here. We want to take this light object and map it back to local space um, because we also have kind of a, a third axis here. And we map this back. And our light is somewhere like this. Now this is good because commonly um, normal maps are defined just as, as straight images. So if we can get every light position relative to that straight image, then that is good. We can do lighting with that. The Z axis <clears throat> is already understood to be pointing back and we don't need to transform the normal map at all. What we do is the normal map remains fixed <clears throat> and the, <clears throat> the world kind of spins around the normal map. Okay, so that's all well and good. Um, but then after we have that, the next question is actually, how do we do this? So we need to look at um, for any, okay, let's say we, we look at this edge here. Okay, we have that edge there and we might find that it corresponds to, I don't know, 
this edge here. So we have a change in position in model space and a change in parameters in um, texture space. So then we have two kind of direction vectors. We'll call this delta position. So there's an X component, a Y component, and a Z component. And um, corresponding to that is a change in parameters over here, which has, um, so there's some change in U and some change in V, which triggers that. And then the relationship is that the, the overall um, change in position is if we take the change in U and multiply it by the tangent vector, which is unknown at this point, and then we take the change in V and multiply it by the bitangent vector, which is also unknown, then that linear relationship, the combination of those two um, direction vectors gives our change in direction here, more or less. Um, there might be some multipliers on top of that, but that's okay because we're just trying to solve for the fundamental direction vectors. So for instance, if we have a small change in parameter, it might correspond to a really large triangle, in which case everything's scaled up, um, but the tangent and bitangent, are, they still have to be normalized, right? So it, we're not accounting for that, but that's okay because we're still just getting the direction. So if I broke this down further into components, then we could say something like, okay, um, the change in X. So we go change in position. It's X component is, um, again, U and V are just parameters. So change in parameter, uh, change in U times the X component of the tangent plus change in V times the X component of the bi-tangent and so on. And you can see that we could extend this to Y and Z in exactly the same way. We could write this out as a system of equations. We could also write it out, well, any system of linear equations has a matrix representation. So here's a matrix representation of this transformation. Okay, so um, before I was doing it with just a single change in position and parameters, but in order for this system to be solvable, we will need two. Okay, uh, oh yeah, so the reason we need two is if we just had, if we just had one, then, well, we'd have kind of like that, kind of like that system. Um, and then we need to take the inverse of this matrix, but this, is really just a row vector and a row vector is not square and so that doesn't have an inverse so we need to okay so you can probably see where we're going from here um, the goal is to solve for these this matrix get the two rows and that's a tangent and the bitangent and what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by the inverse of this matrix here so we'll say Actually, I'll just do this in, so, so these are the rows. So the first row is the tangent, the second row is the bi-tangent. So I'm just compactifying that notation. So again, we need to take the inverse of this matrix, multiply it by that thing there. Um, 
So we know how to take the inverse of a two by two. We divide by the determinant, which is that expression there, just going on diagonal minus the off diagonal. And then we um, swap the diagonal entries on the on diagonal. and we negate the off diagonal entries. Then multiply that by this matrix here, which is, again, I'll just note, compact that. Cool, so that's the expression, but if we wanted to write it out by hand, because we will have to calculate it, right? Um, this is how we do it one over that expression that we had before times we go like this so first we'll do the x's so we have delta v2 minus that so we have that a little hard to read i'll get i'll get a little closer That's yeah, better. And then uh, for the y component of the tangent, we have that. So again, we're just um, multiplying these with the y component. It's hard to see because I zoomed out, but the y component of um, of these and then you can see how this goes it's it's exactly the same rule just swapping out the the y's for z's so that would continue there and then for the bi-tangent well we do this with the second row so we have minus u2 times the x component and then positive delta u1 like that, and that gives us the x component of the bitangent. And then we go um, do it again. And that would give us the y component of the bitangent, and so on and so on. Well, not really that so on, right? Just, I haven't got space to write the z's, but they're there, they are there. Okay, cool, so that's how we kind of dig into the weeds and don't forget after we after we perform that operation each element of that matrix must be divided by this determinant um, and there we have it so that is a little more explanation about um, by tangents by tangents and normals by the way this is very similar to if you have studied any differential geometry there's a concept of a Frenet frame what a Frenet frame is, is as a particle follows a path through space, it's going along, um, it has a local frame of movement. So we can look at it in the world and it has a position and direction and everything. Then the local frame is, um, it has a tangent and a normal and what's called a, a binomial. And that's very similar to the concept of a camera, which has a forwards and up and a right vector. So um, we can see that things are kind of coming together. Or at least if you're like me and you spend too much time studying math and you see, oh yeah, things are coming together. Um, <laughs> side note, with the, with the curve, it has a normal and a binormal because that's a curve. A curve can't have two tangents. On the other hand, a surface has a tangent and a bitangent. Anyway, um, I hope you had fun and I just wanted to flesh that out a little bit more. And yeah, I'll see you, see you soon. Bye.